Thanks for taking time out of your busy day or night to check out this episode of Vintage Audio Review, in which I talk about the realistic APM-500 power meter. The APM-500 made its debut in the 1985 Radio Shack catalog at a price of $24.95. In episode number 26, I reviewed the realistic APM-100 power meter which was a 100 watt maximum indication which had the ability to measure 100 watts into either 4 or 8 ohms and had analog meters. This power meter is rated at 200 watts into 8 ohms. There is no provision to switch it for 4 ohm loads and it uses LEDs with a maximum of 200 watts per channel. It also has a switch to select between the 2 watt maximum scale and the 200 watt maximum scale. Now, it does have an accuracy of plus or minus 3 dB for the first six LEDs with a plus or minus 1.5 dB accuracy for the last LED. And the frequency response is listed at 20 Hz to 20 kilohertz. I'm going to show you a little bit more close up of the front and back. There's not a lot going on, but just to be complete, I will show that in a moment. I also wanted to just talk about power meters. A lot of people don't care for power meters. Maybe they like analog power meters. Maybe they like digital power meters. I'm a guy that likes gauges. Since my first car in 1975, where it had just the basic idiot lights, I had to have a vacuum gauge, I had to have a tachometer, I had to have an oil pressure, water temperature, and an ammeter. I like having all that stuff. For me, I like having a power meter as well in my audio systems if the amplifier does not have any kind of power indicator. That being said, I'm going to do a close-up on the APM-500 and just show it in a little bit more detail. So the APM-500 has a power on off switch as well as a range switch with a maximum of 200 watts or 2 watts, take your pick. The 2 watt range is on the bottom and the 200 watt range is on the top. The center zero LED is green, that just means your power is on and you can kind of see the graduations in power for each range. And there's nothing exciting going on around the back of the unit other than it does have the push type speaker terminals that you would connect your wires from your speakers to. On the bottom of the unit you can see there are three screws here, here, and here. And if you remove those you can slide the chassis out from the case. Here is an inside view of the APM500 with the cover removed and you can see the two trim pots that I adjusted in order to get the levels higher. And here we have the bottom view showing the circuit board traces of the APM500 as well as the little transformer on the right. I just wanted to show the effect of adding the power meter to the system as far as does it increase distortion or not. And the graph on the right is without the power meter connected and the graph on the left is with the power meter connected. And this is just for the one kilohertz standard condition. And you can see there really isn't any difference between the THD for either the left or right channel or any of the data for that amount. I did not do any frequency response testing on it. I just figured that the THD would show up if indeed the power meter somehow loaded down the circuit. Right now the Soundcraftsman PCR800 is outputting about 1 watt into 8 ohm loads and the APM-500 power meter is in the 2 watt range and that would be the bottom scale and it's only showing 0.22 watts so it's way off and what I'm going to do is go to the 200 watt range here and put a little bit more power and see if it's still off. So right now I have the Sound Craftsman set to put out about 11 and a half watts into 8 ohms and the meter range has been switched to 200 watts which would be the top scale and you can see that it's only showing about 0.25 watts so there are some problems with this power meter. Fortunately the user's manual for the APM500 has a schematic diagram and 
I went in and adjusted both channels, trim pots right here, such that the maximum signal was coming in from the load into pin two. And that gave me the most accurate reading that I could get on the APM 500. Let's see how it does the rest of the way. So right now, we're going to see where the LEDs first come on. And the lowest scale right here is 2 milliwatts. So if I go ahead and crank up the amplitude, right there, we're seeing them both kind of come on. And that's basically 7 milliwatts. So it's off a little bit at 2 milliwatts. Uh, we'll increase the power. It's pretty steady there, right, right at 7 milliwatts. It's steady. So it would fail its specification at that point. So the next LED is 40 milliwatts. And you can see that we're just hitting it on the right channel. On the left channel, there's no action. I'm going to go ahead and crank up the power, which you can see right here. And we still have nothing on the left. Right there, we have the left channel going. So we're at, oh, we'll just call it 63 milliwatts, 40 milliwatts. And we would be within the plus or minus 3 dB spec requirement for this LED. Right now, I'm shooting to hit the 0 0.22 watt or 220 milliwatt LEDs. There we go. So we're seeing it on the right channel at 313 milliwatts. We got to apply a little bit more power till the left channel comes on. There we go. So basically, the same amount of power for each 330 milliwatts. So in actuality, we would be meeting the plus or minus 3 dB spec requirement. So now I'm trying to light up the 0.5 watt LED, or 500 milliwatts. And you can see right here on the right side, we've got our uh, LED lit. On the left side, we still do not. Let's go up just a little bit more. Oh, there we go. So basically, at 674 milliwatts, we're lighting up the half milliwatt on the left side. And um, we did a bit better on the right side. It, it did a bit before the uh, 685 milliwatts. So the plus or minus 3 dB requirement would be met for this LED. So right now, I'm shooting to hit the 1 watt LED. And you can tell that the right channel is hitting it and the left channel is not yet. We're almost exactly the same power, 1.25 watts. Let me increase power just a little bit. Not there yet. A little bit more. A little bit more. There we go. So at 1.4 watts, they are both lit. Both LEDs for the 1 watt are lit. That also is meeting the spec requirement. So now I am going to see how accurate the seventh LED is, which would be the 2.0 watt into 8 ohm LED. You can tell already that the right channel is picking it up at about 2.8 watts. I'm going to have to boost the amplitude a little bit more to get the, there we go. So basically 2.87 watts for the left channel. And this was, what I say, 2.8 watts. So... Overall, it's looking pretty accurate because the spec on that seventh LED was plus or minus one and a half dB. So that would be a range of um, up to three watts it could read and still be within its specification for the two watt LED. So now we're going to go to the 200 watt range and see what happens there. Okay, right now we're on the 200 watt range and I'm going to go to ahead and try to hit the uh, 250 milliwatt LEDs. We're not there yet. Go a little bit more and we can see that the right channel is picking it up and we're at 700 milliwatts for the right channel and now we're at 705 for the left channel and it's picking it up. So this LED would not be hitting its plus or minus 3 dB requirement. The next LED up is the 4.2 watt LED. So I'm going to increase the amplitude, and there we go. 
For the right channel, we're reading 5.82 watts. We still got to probably go up another notch or two for the left channel. There we go. So 6 watts for the left channel, 5.82. So basically, let's call it 6 watts. So that would be meeting the plus or minus 3 dB requirement. Our next LED up is the 11.5 watt LED. And I'm going to crank up the power just a little bit. And at 15.6 watts, the right channel is picking up. And at 16.9 watts, the left channel is picking up. So it also would be meeting the plus or minus 3 dB requirement. So now we're going to shoot for the 22.8 watt LED. And I'll crank up the power. And there we go on the right channel. So we're at 30.5 watts. And the left channel is going to take a little bit more. And there we go for the left channel, 32.9 watts. We would still be meeting the plus or minus 3 dB requirement for accuracy. The next LED we want to hit is the 50 watt LED. So we'll crank up the power a little bit till we get there. Right there at 62.3 watts for the right channel. And it's going to take a little bit there. There we go. And 67.3 watts for the left channel. So we would still be meeting the plus or minus 3 dB requirement. So right now we're going to hit the 100 watt into 8 ohms. If you notice over here on the screen, it's showing that there's a uh, minus 2.5 dB input gain reduction. And that just is the way that my load is configured now so that I don't overload my handy dandy QA402 audio analyzer. I'm going to go ahead and increase the power and at 122 watts, our right channel is coming on. At 130 watts, our left channel is coming on. So once again, it is meeting the plus or minus 3 dB requirement. As the data showed, except for the very first LED in either the 2 watt range or the 200 watt range, the APM-500 met its plus or minus 3 dB requirement. Now when the seventh LED was hit on the 2 watt range, it also met its plus or minus one and a half dB requirement. However, you did not see any data for the 200 watt LED. And the reason for that is, as I was cranking up the power, I noticed smoke coming out of the APM-500. And it turns out that at 240 watts going into eight ohms, the sound craftsman was distorting at that point. And the unit still had not hit its range and a couple resistors, which you'll see here in just a moment, started giving off some smoke. It didn't hurt anything and the unit still worked the same as it had before, but I am just going to recommend that you don't put 200 watts of a sine wave into this unit. Now the other thing that I did, which you did not see, was I did run a frequency response to see how well the power was over frequency and it did fairly well. I'm going to look down and read the numbers because I don't have them memorized. So I changed the frequency to 100 Hertz and kept the power at 11 and a half Watts and the left LED came on at 18.9 Watts where the right LED came on at 17.1 Watts. So they both did meet the plus or minus 3 dB requirement. I then jumped over to 10 kilohertz and Keeping the power still at 11 and a half watts, the right channel LED came on at 18.8 watts and the left channel came on at 20.4 watts, still meeting the plus or minus 3 dB requirement. Finally, I went over to 20 kilohertz and keeping the power still at 11 and a half watts into the 8 ohm loads, the right channel took 22.3 watts in order to get the 11 and a half watt LED to come on. And the left channel's LED came on at 23.6 watts. So at 20 kilohertz, it really did not meet the plus or minus 3 dB requirement. At least the right channel met it and the left channel was 
off a little bit. So the left channel just barely missed the plus or minus 3 dB requirement and the right channel did barely make the plus or minus 3 dB requirement. All in all, I had fun testing this. I do have this hooked up to my Klipsch La Scala speakers and at least now I have a better indication of what the LEDs indicate as far as the actual power going in. It's not as much as I thought it was. Now comparing this to the APM-100, the APM-100 was more accurate but it only goes to 100 watts and also the VU meters are harder to see unless you're closer to them where the LEDs can be seen from across a room although you may not get the exact power level from across the room. You can kind of get an idea of how many LEDs are lit. So anyway, that's kind of a summary on the APM-500. I am such a power meter nerd that I built my own Arduino-based power meter, which changes color depending on where it's at in the spectrum. And it is calibrated, but it needs to be recalibrated because it's calibrated for a 400 watt peak. And I don't listen to music that loud very often so it's not as useful but that will be another project anyway thanks for watching again and if you have not subscribed please do so if you have any comments that you would like to share that would be great as well once again thanks for watching and have a great day or night